welcome to Anne Marie's workshop. My name is Anne Marie and I love to make things with joy. If you like to make things with joy or otherwise, <laughs> you have found the right place. Please like, subscribe, and share. Today is going to be part one of my April makes videos. Um, I have expressed in the last couple of videos, April was a very prolific month. I made a lot of things. Um, my dad had slowed down a lot that month, and so I guess I had a lot more free time. So quite a few things got made in the workshop. So I'd like to share some of them with you. I've divided my makes into two videos. Um, normally I like to put them all together, but I think it was gonna result in a video that's like 40 or 45 minutes long. And so I decided to break it up. We'll see whether it works or not. Now, as often happens in the workshop, to quote one of my favorite books, does the walker choose the path or the path the walker? In other words, was I making something that worked with challenges or did a challenge come along that inspired me to do the work? Um, sometimes it's both. So this month there were some very great um, challengers. There was Sew Blouse uh, 23, where you got to make a beautiful blouse and post it to Instagram with the hashtag Sew blouse april 2023 there was there were so many others there was also so recreate the look which was also very fun and um uh let's see what else hold on this is getting older is too much look all over the house and my book is right beside me anyway so there was selfless so so recycle recreate the look oh so me 23 um all dress april PF Stretch Yourself, um, Make Gam Sew Along, Sew April 2023, ha My Makes for the Month, Dress for Spring, Jump into Winter, that's for the other half of the um, globe that is having the opposite weather to us, uh, Color Me Cave, Sew April 2023, there was a lot, but there were some things that um, challenges came out that were right up my alley because those were the things I were making anyway. Now, the only thing that I was inspired to do something was the Sew Cafe, and it's not Color Me Cafe, and it is not until June 23rd. So I did order some fabric. I did start on that project because I love Cafe facet. So um, that's coming up soon. Started. Okay, so the first um, make that I'm going to be showing somewhere around here is a Rachel Comey shirt from a little while ago, uh, Vogue 1503. And I made this version A. I had a remnant of fabric uh, from, I never thought I'd get a chance to use my bell from my library, <laughs> but Pings. And it was very interesting to me because it had no facing on the inside um, it had a crossover neckline on the edges and it was very nice and floaty and it didn't take that much material and it was nice and cool and the cuffs had the right consistency. It's a really nice look for an apple shaped woman. Hopefully you saw a picture of it over here and I'm going to get quite a bit of use from it because Navy Navy is one of my colors, one of my um, basic colors. And so I really enjoyed making this blouse. Now my next make was Simplicity 8911. And this is a calf can. You're supposed to use a knit material, but I ended up, because it was so loose and flowy, I ended up using this pebble crepe that I found at Pings in one of their buckets and the fabric was by the pound. Now what's lovely about this um, caftan is it is slim on the arm. So it's billowy all around the body, but slim on the arm. It's a very, very feminine look. The sleep, the um, neckline is a uh, turnover. It's not bias. It's a turnover and stitch because it has, because there's like a boat but it's very, very pretty, very, very pretty. 
And so I think it's a wonderful pattern if you'd like a caftan to go out on the road or to stay at home. It's very lovely. I hope you're seeing it to my left or right, depends upon which way I edit it. <laughs> but this mustard, um, and it had all of my colors that I love, the yellow, the fuchsia, the blue, and it was just a lovely thing. Very simple to make, a front, a back and two sleeves, really lovely. And my next make was the Harlow shirt by Tissuti. I had a double um, intention when I made this. I wanted to make like a jacket, a, a, like a shirt that could also be open and wear like um, a jacket. And I had this beautiful Ankara to make it in. So this is the, um, the Harlow shirt. Hopefully I'm showing it somewhere around here. And it was so beautiful. It has an interesting detail on the bottom on how the edge, the front and the back are sewed together. And there's like a handkerchief kind of effect here with a pocket on top. And I just love how this pattern swirls around. It's super comfortable. All right, and so I'll show you the back. There's a um, seam in the back, lovely yoke. And it was just, oh, the anchor just made it so lovely. I hope you try this pattern out. It's, it's a real winner. It's a real winner. The jacket was so cute. I decided to take my basic uh, butterick 4552, this is one of the um, patterns that's in my favorites because without any adjustments, it works really, really well on me. So I made a pair of slacks that went along with it, which creates a really striking silhouette. And I have a sparkly um, camisole, stretch camisole that goes underneath it that can make a whole vibe. But I think these pants can be worn with the, the blue, the black, the white, by itself or it can be put together as a set. It's a really nice, it's a very, very old pattern. I'm not exactly sure how old it is. Oh yeah, 2005. You might have to look for this on eBay or Etsy. Several patterns this month that were so much fun to make, kind of outside of the box, kind of unusual. And one of these is, let me find this, this Nomi pattern, color blocked, Opposites attract. I made the long version. I had this sparkly um, uh, Ankara with a foil overlay. And so I made this, um, I made the dress and I will show parts of it over here. And well, some of the best parts were these buttons from Hobby Lobby, the Sewology line. Um, I love the pockets. They are buckets, so they have like, they pop off a bit. I decided to close mine. I don't want to encourage myself to put anything in them, but the bigger ones on the skirt, then they're really, really cute. Okay, now the only reservation I have is this is my first piece of foil Ankara, um, but I highly suspect while I was working with them, I got a, a nimbus, a nice glow of the sparkle on my hands. So it makes me think that eventually these colors are gonna go off. So I'm gonna try not to wash this too much, but I think she's really, really pretty. And um, she's not the only one I'm gonna make from this pattern. It's a lovely wrap dress. It's really simple. Um, to make. Um, if now this next blouse is McCall's 7541. And it is a set of beautiful blouses that you can make that have a little bit of a cape in the back. And this is the blouse I entered it in the So April um, Blouse 2023 20, uh, um, Challenge. And I won a prize three PDFs from the Name Pattern Company, which was a dilemma because I have so many of their patterns. <laughs> so the three that they gifted me, I had to really think, <laughs> what did I need? But I did find three really great patterns. And so I wanted to show you the anatomy of this. 
because it is like there is a inner blouse and an overlay on the back. I don't know if I'm doing a great job of this, but the cape is like an overlay in the back of a regular shirt in the front. So there's a layer here and a layer in the front, singular. Oh, hold on, I don't think I'm doing a good job, hold on. There's an overlay in the front, there's an inner tank, and then an overlay that with the capelet in the back. And all that's really important is that it looks like this when you wear it. I've had them for quite some time. Um, let's see, it is, um, mm, 2017. It might still be in the book, I hope. I'm sure you can find it on eBay, but it is a delight, especially if you have a really sheer fabric because it is so many layers that I'm sure you'll get your modesty um, coverings and things like that. Plus it's floaty and it's pretty. I think you'll really like it. Now this next blouse, poor thing is 3786. I've worn it three times. <laughs> since I made it. It is light, it is beautiful. The fabric is a great match. It has these pin tucks in the front and this poet's collar at the top, kind of tunicky. It has a little gather in the back that pulls into the back. Even if you're apple shaped, it's very complimentary. It is a smash up. I had this pattern for years, Vogue 8649. And I was able to find it again on eBay and ordered the larger size. Because y'all, this is a 6, 10, this is an 8, 10, 12. Things were different when I bought this the first time. This pattern was $4.50. And as a Vogue, you know, that was very, very expensive. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. But I absolutely always loved these sleeves. Here's a small, medium, and large. And I believe this is the large and it has the pit, the tucks on the sleeve and they just look so beautiful so many people have asked me about this pattern um, um it takes a little bit time to make but you know throw on a movie and take your time making the it's worth it i absolutely love this it is not iron y'all i took it out of the uh clean laundry <laughs> but she's a winner i love her pattern for my next make. It is a knockoff of a uh, Jeremy Scott, I believe, um, teddy bear. It's a midi bomber ja um, hoodie. It doesn't, it comes just below the, the breast. It has these teddy bears on it. And if you want to know how I made it, you can go ahead and follow <laughs> the video I did on them. I did a two part video on them. So much fun to make so much fun to make. Um, I had to figure out how to make the little ears on the top of the hoodie. I think in the future, if I make this again, I will line the inside of the hoodie with some kind of interfacing or something, a thin batting to give it some more oomph. I didn't like, with the, because this is um, Lycra, um, I think it needed um, more oomph to it, but I like the, <laughs> I like the lining on the inside, the donuts. If you've watched the movie, it's not donuts. It's supposed to be bagels, but I couldn't find any bagel um, cloth at um, Hobby Lobby. So we went with we went with donuts. Alrighty. So it was so much fun to make. I enjoyed it so much. And my daughter-in-law can't wait to wear it at Halloween. Now, these last two patterns are from Butterick. 6465. It's a Connie Crawford. And it just may not look like a remarkable pattern, but it is a great staple because one of the things I love the most of it, I did it in this sheer aqua and brown, which I will show over here. Beautiful fabric, beautiful fabric. But my favorite part about this pattern is the cuff because the cuff is just the right size that it doesn't fall over your arm. 
you don't need a button or a plaque yet. I really, really love this pattern. I love how it uh, fits over some of the, my items that I have. But really, 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 really nice. Fits very nice. Great on an apple shape. Or if you have a larger bust, this is a great pattern. So there were all kinds of um, uh, plan, uh, accommodations for uh, bust uh, bust darts and things like that. It goes all the way up to 6X. So that's a great pattern. I'm, it might still be in the pattern book. It's 2017. Seems to me that this would be a staple. I'm, I didn't check. If you'll check for me, let me know in the um, comments. But it was really nice. It had a lovely yoke in the back. I did not choose to put the pockets on it because they were sheer materials that I was working with. But I think that would be, um, I'm going to do this pattern again in a woven fabric and we'll see how that works out. So here is the other sheer because I was trying to clear out some fabrics that I've had for the longest time that I haven't done anything with. I had made a camisole out of this fabric um, a couple years ago, but I had a few yards left. I think this takes three yards, um, two, and a, two and an eighth yards if it's 60 inch or three yards um, if it's 45 inch and that's plenty to make a really beautiful blouse. Once again, it has those cuffs that don't need a placket. And um, I, I settled on these buttons, but if I find a more decorative button along the way, I'll replace them. But I had to make do given where I am, the type of buttons. And I really need to see my buttons. You know, it's one thing to look online and kind of hope and pray, but um, it's really nice to be somewhere and like feel the button and see the weight and the color and the shape and everything like that. So this was the Connie Crawford uh, 6465. All right, everyone, that is half of them. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. <laughs> oh, for the uh, for the teddy bear jacket, I used um, this Mimi G pattern eight two two eight to do um, the base. I used the hood from McCall's. Give me a minute. Seven six three seven is where I grabbed the hoodie the hoodie um, hood from. And the teddy bears, well, oh, wait. Which one did I use for the teddy bears? Oh, hold on, guys. One minute. The teddy bears were from um, Simplicity's 8044. And I liked it. I liked the, um, these particular bears because they were two pieces, the front and the back. So um, it was easier for me to try and uh, morph them into what I needed for those um, jackets. Now, what you have looked forward to, I'm working on the elephants for my son's jacket. <laughs> this retirement's getting out of hand. All right, keep making with joy, and we'll see you soon. The other half is coming soon.